I'll just keep... Hi, ma'am. And it's a jetty, by the way. Of course. Jetty. I prefer a good jetty to appear any day. Jet, jet, jetty. Something about the way she says it makes you want to sing. Hello, detectives. It's good to see you here. I only just arrived myself. What brings you here, madame? Nothing, really. I've had my eye on this jetty for weeks now, so I decided to investigate it personally. This cluster of buildings isn't on any of the official maps, as far as I can tell. That. And she's also keeping an eye on you. Hmm. How do I like it? Water drips down eaves of Etonite. The jetty below her feet creaks to the tune. The smell of salt and dog shit in the background. It's pornographically poor. The street has no name. All the men are dead or missing. And is that the carcass of a motor carriage over there? I'm surprised that woman hasn't put me to the sword yet. Maybe she will. You should ask your questions while you can. Dark eyes survey the coast leading up to Martinez. Dull grey metal rests in her scabbard. A sword. The wind is too loud for her to hear. Fortunately for you, madame, the RCM is on the scene. All right. Politics time. Let's react. Real men. Real politics. Real thoughts in your head. That they don't. Do you know how they discovered this place? No, the Insul Indian, Isola. Well, your condition has left you no worse off than most of these people. The literacy rate is around 45% west of the river. Fifty years of occupation have left these people in an oblivion of poverty. I knew you would sympathize. Most Revacholians will never know what this place means. Our home. This island of matter. Or why they were ferried over in the first place. Remind me to tell you one day. For now, how can I assist you in this new location? Of course. I hear you have singled out a suspect and are in pursuit. This is cause for cautious optimism. How can I help you at this juncture? I love you did. She is memorizing your badge number. Pleased to meet you, Lieutenant W. Freighter Dubois. I am glad to see a man of high qualification. The situation is precarious. What can I help you with, Lieutenant Y. Freighter? Hmm. She's not even asking you anything. It's so easy to just say. Of course, detective.
The light vanishes inside the concrete slit. The structure goes deep under the earth. There's no echo and no answer. Maybe it's just a storm drain for the sewer. No idea. Could be connected to one of the buildings around here. We might find her down somewhere. There's an old storm drain system beneath Martinez that's mostly collapsed. Revachol's sewage system has been built and rebuilt four or five times now. In conclusion, she could be under any building. I hope not. Scattering of bullet holes is spread across the cracked wall, reaching from one corner to the other. A row of ghostly shades stand facing the wall. There are many of them, a dozen at least, the heads lowered and eyes blindfolded. It's quiet, no sound, no movement. Ten meters away, other shades are lined up in an orderly manner, automatic rifles primed. A gust of wind blows by. The coats of the firing squad flap slowly in the breeze. A single person stands on the side. The morning sun rises beyond the horizon, radiating the first light of the day. The order was carried out at dawn. A long time has passed since the moment of this fusillading. Rain and brine have since washed all the blood away. Not a trace remains. The abundance of bullet holes leads to two options. Either an inordinate amount of executions were performed here, or they did not use a conscience round, where only one soldier has the loaded rifle. Looks like this was a mass execution with everyone fully armed. A host of men, probably in everyday clothes, ragged from the conflict and covered in dust. They were not sitting a common practice for executions in some nations, as demonstrated by the height level of the bullet holes. They stand, facing the wall. It's impossible to discern any details about their personality or background. Ordinary people, familiar, each and every one of them. Foreign dissidents, unwashed criminals, and hoi polloi. Such is your belief, officer. Maybe you should change it. They were praying, screaming. Seven men in combat uniforms and dark coats holding automatic rifles aimed at the people. Soldiers from some side, but from which one? Men of duty, dark duty. Martyrs of the nation, the ardent knights, the few who had the guts to do this. The Commandant, the one who gives the order. Machine gun fire crackling through the air. The lights of the muzzle flashes dancing on his face. I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Veld. Another likely scenario. Or maybe. Yeah, 
It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. There's no way the perp is in here, officer. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable. But I like the spirit. Have some points. It's lonely and cold without points. The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in, though many have tried. I'm Gary. How do you do, officer? Yellow man. I mean, officer. The lieutenant raises his eyebrows slightly and takes out his notebook. Yellow man. Interesting. This is something to ask him about, after a little probing first. I'm just waiting for my friend Morel to finish up with his insect traps so we can return to civilization. I like nature, just not this bloody coast. It's mostly drunks and degenerates that come here. Degenerates? This man respects authority too much. To see the truth inscribed upon thine own visage. Pretend thou art a paragon of virtue. Oh, uh, I didn't mean it in any scientific way. Serious question time. This man is no innocent. No one is. No, no. I help Morel with research sometimes, and I've learned some things along the way. But I don't usually go in for picnics like this on my own. After all this time with Morel, he must have an opinion on cryptids. This could lead to a good one. Oh, yes. The burning rhino. Morel doubts he's real, but I don't much care. Because I won't be the one looking for him out in Safra Serai. 
a rhinoceros that looks ordinary during the day, but burns brightly by night. Well, at least the males do. They have special ducts just above their shoulder blades that secrete a combustible fluid. When the rhino is just beginning to light itself, it looks as though it has wings of fire. But how is this combustible fluid lit? The rhino starts running very fast to build heat, then stops, raises its head, and sparks fly from its neck, setting its back ablaze. Yeah, well, Revacol used to be a flaming rhino once, a long time ago. That seems unlikely too, doesn't it? Super solid argument, Gary. Can't argue with that. The flames are not just for decoration. They are an integral part of the beast's mating behavior. During the burning rhino's mating season, herds of male rhinos, all aflame, encircle herds of female rhinos, forming a fiery ring as they begin to copulate loudly. Local peasants call it the Passion Ring. They fear the rhinos, as perhaps they should. Anyway. The lieutenant sighs without looking up from his notes. It's clear the burning rhino is dear to him on many levels, some even spiritual. Oh, so that's what the RCM in Martinez is about. Great, great to hear someone's finally taken care of that. So you do know something about it? No, no. Nothing. He was some kind of mercenary. But everyone here knows that. I'm just glad to hear you're looking into it. That's all. He didn't kill him or anything, but there's something going on here. My mug? Why would you think that? Really? I hear it all the time. All in jest, of course. No offense meant to anyone. Okay, okay, I admit it. I threw the mug away in the trash container behind the hostel. I know I shouldn't have, and I am very sorry, officer. You're not going to find me. Are you? Whew. Thank you. You won't regret this. I won't use another man's property to dump my garbage ever again. I don't know what got into me, really. Work has been stressful lately. Damn Koiko's price dumping us out of competition. What did you do, Gary? Nothing. Nothing. Just answering some questions. Helping out the law. I know a guy who works with the trash collection services. CS Municipal. He gave me a master key for the trash containers of Martinez. So I can use the Whirling's trash compactor to store my own stuff. Garbage disposal is expensive as hell. The damn Himeans run it like a mob. I'm sorry, okay? I thought I could cut costs. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have disgraced myself. Disgraced? No need for the histrionic, sir. It was, after all, just a trash container. He studies his reaction. Gary doesn't answer. 
Officer, please, let me explain. It's not like that. I was only cleaning up. I live right across the yard from where he was hanged, and I saw him stripped naked. All the clothes lying around in the yard, smelling. People are animals, you know? Then I came out to clean up the rags, because no one else would. I put them into the Whirling's trash, along with a broken mug, admittedly. Okay. I was coming to throw the mug away, and, well, I threw the mug there and the clothes too. Right. It was just civic duty. Exactly. That's exactly what it was. Civic duty. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads against one another as they roll across a hardwood floor. You've heard this sound before, but where? What sound? Really? There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Armor? No. I, I mean, yes. Of course. I know he was wearing armor, but I don't know anything about it. An infant could see he's not telling the truth, but he's too scared to admit more wrongdoing. What sound? I haven't the slightest. There's lots of weird stuff out here in the reeds, though. Insects, trash, could be the wind shifting some garbage nearby. The sound you heard was not the sound of something easily abandoned. Officer, please. I was only cleaning up. Then I... Okay. Right. Exactly. As he shifts uncomfortably, a series of clicks, like the clinking of glass beads, against one another as they roll across a... What? I haven't the slightest. The sound you heard... I hope I could help your investigation. In my small way. Don't be so relieved yet, Gary. This bad cop may have been in your apartment admiring your mug collection. Perhaps a little intimidation? Not many sealites here, or anywhere, other than sale. I meant no offense, truly. No, no problem at all. Sounds like some conspiracy topic. You might be able to discuss it with him when the lieutenant isn't here. If you can remember it. Sure do, officer. His eyes narrow slightly. He's wondering where this is going. How? But why were you in my apartment, officer? So you work for Everard Clare? Officer, please tell him we're good. No, no, tell him I'll make it up to him. What have I done? He'll send the muscle after me. What could it be about? I probably talked too loud. In the whirling. About some theories I had. Whatever it is, I'm done with it. I won't do it again. If there's anything I can do to assist you, or the Union, just ask, okay? I'll try to help if I can. This scared him proper. He's positively melting from fear has to prop himself up with a lot of anger to keep it together. The weather vein has turned. He cannot be unturned. 
He clearly liked his squirming. He may even have changed his mind about the whole door opening operation. Always a pla- I mean, officers. Is he? He's looking comfortable enough. Maybe it was just beads. Sounded like beads. I don't pray, officer. Faith in non-existent helpers is a sign of weakness. Not for proper Revacolian men such as ourselves. Hear that? Magnesium. That's what you're lacking. The lack of magnesium has you slouched. Yes, and it's critical. Look at yourself. You're practically devolving into a fish due to the lack of magnesium in your bloodstream. You need to get so magged up. You've probably had two heart attacks and a minor stroke already. And the only prescription is insane amounts of magnesium. Yes, if you want to live, you need to evolve. You need to transcend the carbon barrier. Go to the apothecary and buy insane amounts of magnesium. It will reverse the damage to your circulatory system. Always a pleasure to see, I mean, officers. That shirt looks very uncomfortable on him. Look at the buttons, barely keeping that thing together, as if, yes, like a piece of ceramic armor, for example, one that makes a clicking sound when the plates meet each other, resembling pearls or marbles, stolen from the corpse in the yard near where he lives. I knew you'd figure it out, officer. I'm sorry I didn't tell you at once. I was... I was ashamed of what I did, and I didn't want you to know. We're not detecting falsehood, sire. He's gearing up to admit the truth. This shame is surprisingly sincere. Gary, what's going on? Later, Morrell. I've got apologizing to do. No. You've got explaining to do. He sighs again, hangs his head, and unbuttons his shirt fully. A cuirass that matches the dead man's boots comes into view. Soon it is in your hands, smelling of his sweat but so, so light to hold, like a bag of cotton. Everyone was picking those pieces off him, and I was watching them do it. And they'd scattered his clothes all over the yard. Everything was smelling. So I went there to take out the trash and started cleaning up. All those rags on the ground, him swinging up there, and I had a lapse of honor, sir. I thought, he's a foreigner. They all say he wasn't from here. Only the caress was left, so I stripped it off him. It was early in the morning. No one saw me. I took it with me. It was a mistake. Had I known it would give you guys trouble, I... I wouldn't have... Fuck. We're detecting sincere contrition here, sire. He's not trying to flatter anyone. It's okay. It was a loose end, and you are tying it up now. I'm so fucking sorry I called you Yellow Man. CLI officers commanded the Suzerain's navy. Most of them sided with the king when... They were thoroughly conservative men, he realizes suddenly. It's difficult to say what the lieutenant thinks of this historic apology. His face does not belie emotions. 
because I was weak. I should have told you the moment I saw you, but... The hell, Gary? You in trouble? I'll explain later. I always thought it was the Union, but I sure as hell won't go around saying that anymore. You have my word. I don't know, and I won't be running my mouth on this subject anymore. This is all he knows. Yes, absolutely. I will never do anything like this again. I, I won't mess with Mr. Clare either. You have my word. Go. Nice and easy. No way out, little guys. Not out of this gem. There's a cylinder on the ground in which the man is arranging some netting. It looks like some kind of trap. He notices you. Who's there? Oh, the police. Hello, officers. His self-conscious enthusiasm renders his movements ungainly. He looks like your understanding of a scientist. To what do I owe the pleasure? That's sarcasm. He takes no pleasure from your appearance. Oh no, it's alright. I'm just busy. What's this about? Eh, of course. Thank you for passing along the message. That damn water lock is broken, and we can't go all the way around the 881. The 881 is a raised motorway that separates Martinez from Jamrock. The labyrinth of streets underneath it makes it difficult to pass, not like walking over a nice water lock. Oh, good. We should really be getting back. Gary could use a hot shower and a warm bid. Did he say we can go back now? Yes, Gary. We can go soon. If you see Lena, tell her I won't be long. Sir, your wife is waiting for you. I just have to do one more round. See if the phasmid has taken the bait. Then we go in. For all his passion, this man is diligent and patient. You could learn things from him. Hmm. Well, first of all, it's damn difficult to find, which is why we've been knee-deep in the reeds laying traps for it. Good question. Being a phasmid of the order Phantasmodea, a ghost insect, it disguises itself as plant matter. In this case, the reeds. Awful lot of reeds around aren't there? And I suspect it may have also developed other specialised techniques to protect itself from predators or scientists in our present case. It's my hypothesis that it has evolved certain electrochemical defences that allow it to interfere with animal perception, impeding pattern recognition, confusing the visual cortex. But I cannot describe how these defences work, much less how they evolve. 
without studying a live specimen. A ghost insect, he said. These people are looking for a ghost. I'm expecting it to be quite giant. One known species of phasmid, called the Megaphasmodea zoensis, is about the size of a grown man's forearm. So, uh, Typical rookie assumption. Insects are much more sophisticated creatures than those unversed in zoology give them credit for. Even simply catching a glimpse of the Insulindian phasmid would be the apex of my, of any, cryptozoologist's career. But to study it and its defences, find out how it stayed hidden so long. No, that is precisely what we're not. We are zoological specialists looking for an extant species of phasmid. Very little, I'm sorry to say. No one's ever captured a specimen, so all our information is based on first and third hand accounts. Not yet. That's what makes it a cryptid. <clears throat> Just out of curiosity, if there's no proof of its existence, how do you know it's real? I know it's real. It's clear that his obsession with the phasmid is driven by something more than the pure pursuit of scientific advancement. By which I mean, I've heard enough first-hand accounts to believe quite firmly that the Insulindian phasmid is more than mere superstition. Yes, the most recent sighting was by a couple of teenagers along the coast here. That's what brought us to Martin A's specifically. It's the first credible sighting in several decades. Admittedly, it's an unusual location for this species, but with all the sewage runoff upstream, it probably doesn't matter much anymore. I have to resist the thought. Such an extraordinary creature is doubtlessly highly resilient, after all. It's generally thought to be capable of parthenogenesis. He means asexual reproduction. The females of the species don't need to mate to produce viable eggs. This makes it easier for a species with a small population to survive. Yes, the Insulindian phasmid is a very clever insect. That's why it's so damn difficult to catch. But as a scientist, I'll try my best to remain dispassionate. Well, they may not look impressive, but Lena designed them quite cleverly, so I'm sure they'll do the trick. Yes. Simple. Attracted by the locusts, the phasmid crawls down the funnel and, having eaten its fill, can't get back out. At least, that's the intention. The net isn't a perfect solution, but we didn't want to use anything that might damage the specimen's delicate exoskeleton. Locusts. Nearly all known phasmids are herbivores, of course. But we've hypothesized that the Insulindian phasmid might occasionally prey on other insects. Inside the traps, a number of locusts crawl and tumble over one another in a tiny, chittering swarm. A meat-eating stick insect? Does it pretend to be the reeds as part of its ambush behavior? This seems unlikely. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. Thank you for your opinion. We have also included plant material in the traps to satiate your skepticism. They'll work, I assure you. 
The predatory hypothesis, using Locus as bait, accounts for the failure of previous efforts by other teams, which use plants. We have given this some thought. The traps do seem to be deftly and thoughtfully constructed. It's clear the cryptozoologist's wife knows what she's doing. Yes. What? I'm afraid not, officer. I've been busy digging around in the reeds for days, looking for signs of insect activity. I'm less interested in mammalian concerns, to be perfectly honest. The lieutenant takes a short note in his notebook, then gestures for you to proceed. I've just always liked animals and puzzles. Searching for cryptids is a bit of both. It's not child's play, just because I have to traipse through the mud every so often. Real. I know you think one is a respectable profession, while the other is superstition. Everyone does. Indeed. My methods do not differ from other scientists. I simply draw upon a wider variety of evidence. And I have more hope that something truly surprising might happen. Your nerve endings tell you there is no such thing as a positive surprise. Agreed. Yet there is always a chance, albeit a small one, of a truly good surprise. One simply needs to look at the history of science. Serendipities abound. No, as I said, I have yet to catch a cryptid. Although I have come close. Close enough to keep trying. Mmm, mmm, interesting. Something for later, this close call. Everything from forgotten regional law to newspaper accounts, like the one that brought us here, to look for the Phasmid. I keep a very open mind. He's interested in things that people believe that scientists don't. Most establishment scientists only care about reputation and remuneration, not real research, and certainly not the truth. They're a cowardly lot, and both the field and basement archives can be dangerous places. No, very few cryptids are ever discovered, and not for a lack of trying. To stay hidden is a cryptid's primary quality. It's even in the name, cryptid. Of the list of cryptids kept by the Cryptozoological Society of Shemni, which is 4,082 items long, about 2,000 have been confirmed as hoaxes. Two are categorised as confirmed discoveries. The rest are in differing stages of discovery, refutation and data collection. Yes, the Chateau Quan Forest Pygmy who turned out to be an extinct species of primate and a cave salamander from Hugo Grad, who is, honestly, quiet and remarkable. It's in a zoo somewhere. We cryptozoologists are brutally honest with ourselves, more so even than the public. With cryptids, most cryptids are hoaxes or they are never found. That does not mean we should stop searching. In fact, it is 0.05%, ever more magnificent, should our search contribute to making that number 0.075%. He has clearly done his math on this. There is no surprising him or swaying his opinion. Yes? Hell no. I had no idea, and I'm still cross with him, to be honest. 
It's not like him. He's got his quirks, but dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. Thanks. He's still glad his friend stood up for him. And I'm eager to return to her, I assure you. But I can't leave before we finish with these traps. My wife understands that just as well as anyone. Come on, Morel. We've been soaking out here for days. It's time to go back. And leave the traps? Absolutely not. I won't let Lena down. Come on, she wants us back. I'm soaked up to my nuts over here. We'll both catch reed crabs if we don't dry out soon. Won't let Lena down. Sounds like the cryptozoologist's wife shares a special connection to the phasmid somehow. Of course it's important to her. She's seen it. A verified sighting, on record. One of only four this century, and it's hers. Yes, that's how we first came to know one another, in fact. But that's her story to tell, not mine. <coughs> Suffice to say, it's long been our dream to find proof of the Insulindian phasmid together. <coughs> I can't abandon course now. No, no, no. The traps need to be monitored on a regular schedule. What would we do if the Phasmid were to starve while we were sipping tea at the hostel? He's dead set on this. Hmm. I could go for some trap setting. I didn't expect you to take such an interest in our work here, officer. Why not? At least it will give us the excuse to look into a lot of reels. That it will. That it absolutely will. I hope you brought your good boots. That's highly unlikely, officer. But in the event you do, I'll spray you with a pheromone mixture I developed. It's made of musk and research chemicals. The pheromone should attract the insect to you, or at least prevent it from bolting at the side of you. It's quite potent, will last you about a week. Your choice, as I said, the chances of you encountering the Phasmid are next to zero. But you, you feel you should have it on you. Something bad might happen. Don't mess around. Take the pheromone. It will make you sexier. Bring it to me at once. Just make sure the trap is closed tight. He's not comfortable with the possibility that you'll claim the find. But he's lying about this even to himself. I hope you're not paying this. He dispenses it without letting you touch the canister, so it would be precious like holy water. It is precious. A single dose cost me 50 real to develop. Not that I expect you to understand self-financing one's own research. There are four in total. One is to the south, on this little peninsula. By the boathouses there. It's very near. Another we set in Land's End, to the northeast. It's behind a small sand dune there, on your way to the old radio tower, after the church. The third is set near the canal, where you crossed, by a concrete slab. A big thicket of reeds going up the slope, and among them... You should check at least one of those before returning to this one, since I just said it. This one's more of a technicality, but still, better safe and stupid than sorry. Right, 
Which means you two can pack up and go back to the whirling. Whatever he thinks about this detour, it's clear that these men are exhausted and in need of assistance. Finally! Someone's talking sense. Thank you for your help. Gary and I will start breaking down camp. If you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. We'll be gone once you get to it. If it's more cryptid-related business you want to discuss, you'll have time for that later too. But what if the information is vital on the hunt? Alright. What cryptids precisely? I usually discuss these things with specialists, so I don't know what. We would have to discuss. He wants to say, but decides against it, since you've offered to help. A willow person. It's a long story. One non-specialist would find rather dull. Willow people? Not at all. They're not people, really. Some argue they aren't really animals. As they seem to have evolved directly from trees. They're very, very thin. Almost flat, in fact, and can camouflage themselves easily, wrapping themselves around trees and blending in with the tree bark. In that way, they're not too dissimilar from the phasmid we're looking for here. You probably have. Gary and I painted an entire grove's worth of trees in slow drying paint. It was a bright lavender colour. I was hoping one of the Willow people would get pain on it and not be able to camouflage itself. After waiting in hiding for hours, I saw a figure slip from one of the trees, a lavender shadow dashing through the grove. I chased it with a knit, not very elegant. You can't be elegant in the field, and, well, it was faster than me. A lavender shadow. I know you think we were snacking on funny mushrooms. It's easier to mock someone than to admit that the world might be more interesting than you've imagined. Furthermore, I am not saying it was a confirmed sighting. I'm painfully aware of what goes into verifying such things. There is a serious possibility that I saw a squirrel or a trick of the light. I am my own harshest critic. He makes it a real point here to sound falsifiable. Confirmed. It's 100% verified and meets all the standards of an authentic cryptid sighting. Formerly the most dangerous, yes. But do you know the most dangerous living cryptid? He doesn't want to make it feel like you knowing it is some big deal. The most dangerous cryptid is a carnivorous ruminant, known colloquially as the Dread Moose. Yes, the Dread Moose subsists entirely on flesh. It has even been known to dig up fresh graves in search of sustenance. Human remains have been found deep in the forest, torn apart, then trampled into the mulch by large hooves. Infer from that what you will. Just like an ordinary ardent moose. You can't. That's what makes it so dreadful and hard to identify. A moose that looks like any other moose. What's going on here? He's kidding, right? The bodies found in the forest are just one piece of physical evidence. There's more. The recent surge in the moose population. As hidden carnivores, the dread moose are effectively removing competition for both themselves and their evolutionary cousins. Moose are already being hunted for sport. Can you imagine what would happen if they came to be viewed as predators? The carnivorous moose are a very young species. 
the result of a genetic mutation that fared well in the process of natural selection. It makes sense that such a majestic animal with natural weapons, antlers, would come to rule the forest. The only strange thing is that it took so long. One slaughterhouse at the outskirts of the woods in Vasa reported that its staff kept seeing moose in the distance. The moose would just stare at the building as though they were waiting for something, its eyes bloodshot and full of cruelty. And that's not all. Some of the slaughterhouse apprentices went hiking by a nearby creek and saw a moose nibbling on an unidentified carcass. This isn't something unique. Various species of deer have been known to scavenge when plant food is scarce. Anyway, there is more than enough evidence to justify a thorough search for the dread moose. Let's close the subject before it turns into an argument. Here is a man who has had more than his fair share of heated arguments and would, surprising as it may seem, prefer not to have any more. Did he? That one's a hoax. Some Serais rice farmers set fire to rhinoceros cadavers and use them to scare tourists. Many times, it always turns into an argument. I don't want to repeat it. The rhino holds a special place in his heart. Let it. Myths are part of my field. Many of them probably are. Statistically speaking, about 20% of all cryptids are verified hoaxes. Uncovering falsehoods deliberately fabricated to fool the public is just as much my calling as finding new species. If perhaps slightly less enjoyable. Which one? Mm hmm. The burning rhino is where they draw the line. Did you? It is almost as difficult to confirm a hoax as it is to confirm a sighting. <coughs> no offense, officer, but I'm not much of a pedagogue. I don't know what I would have done if Lena hadn't persuaded me to go back to field research. You should ask her if you want interesting stories. Me? I'm not a people person, unless you haven't noticed. And I don't make a good lecturer. My strength lies in field work and persistence. By all means. Bright, a slogan used to intertwine with above the mural, a collapsed roof, broken windows set in walls that are cracking and will soon also fall, and the coastal breeze rustling and sighing in the remains of the edifice. Fell electrical. How ironic. All these dark rooms. Fell electrical. You only know them as a small company that makes ink cartridges. Looks like they used to be big. There's something in the wind. Sometimes the only way to go forward is to fail first. In there? She could. Or she could be in the identical room over there, or in that boat shack, in that church tower, maybe. Why single out this one building? So 
Suddenly, all is quiet. There is no cold hand brushing against your forehead, no rustle in the reeds. The wind has died down or gone behind a corner. You only hear distant waves washing the coast. The ruin in front of you is silent as a tomb. How do we? I was really hoping she'd be in the village. <sighs> okay. She's probably north of the village, and this place is a peninsula. We've already talked to the cryptozoologists. Working with them might give us a good excuse to run around, give us some structure. And then there's the church. We've already searched that and can rule it out. I know it doesn't feel like progress, but exclusion is a step too. Anyway, we do it the old-fashioned way, sector by sector. Go over the whole peninsula, ask the locals, enter the places where we can enter first, like we did in the village. Trying to talk to the wind, the city, whatever you thought would happen, did not. And now you're just standing there with your hands fallen to your side. Is trying to talk to the city something you've done before? Is it in your secret repertoire? A trick for when you're out of ideas? Then, if we're desperate, we can look where we can't enter. Bankers, tomb drainage, this place. I'm sure it won't come to that. Walk the coast, the old boardwalk, the reeds. You can always come back here and talk to the wind again. Look where it already got you. Hello again. No, I'm afraid I can't help you with this one, officer. It's just a regular day off for me and Mikhail here. So you haven't seen anyone around? No, I'm sorry. As I said, this is just a day off. We just arrived anyway. There's something friendly and familiar in how he says that. A day off. He's telling the truth. He hasn't seen anyone. Sure, what's on your mind? But of course, what else? Well, that certainly depends. You know, the popular image of the coalition is of a monolithic political military entity. But in reality, it's a comprised of many interconnected yet semi-autonomous components. For instance, the officers of Inshacom are responsible for military affairs. These officers are located in the bank of the World Building, just a few kilometers from here. But then there's also the Provisional Commission as well as the Institute for Revacholian Culture, with its architecturally significant headquarters in Le Jardin. Inshikom is responsible for all aspects of the military occupation of Revachol. During the revolution, they coordinated the efforts of the Occidental and Gradian invasion, but these days their function is primarily logistical. Oh, the Institute is a marvelous organization, my favorite part of the coalition by far. Their mandate is twofold, to export notable works of Revacholian culture throughout the moral intern, while also importing the most important culture products of the wider world to citizens of Revachol. There's an exhibition on Vespertine proto-expressionism that I can't wait to take Mikhail to. We're working our way through the major artistic movements of the last century. Of course there is. The Coalition's economic affairs are handled by the Bank of the World, Revachol Mission. They operate in concert with the Institute of Price Stabilité in Serre-la-Clé. Ah, that's simple. You're looking for the Comité de Responsabilité de Revachol. It's a sort of clearinghouse for Coalition affairs in Revachol. Yes, this is just the sort of reasonable authority you're looking for. If you will, picture the coalition as a kind of wheel. The hub of this wheel is the Comité de Responsabilité, and out from that hub radiate a great many spokes, which connect to Inchicom, the Institute for Revacholian Culture, the Provisional Commission, and so on. I have a long-standing interest in political systems. You see, it's my personal theory that political systems are a lot like personalities. In other words, 
how a state organizes itself is in some way the public expression of its innermost character. The man smiles at you for a long moment. He is doing his best not to show it, but the smile is ever so slightly more forced than before. Of course, officer, we've only recently met. It would require a more thorough conversation than we have time for to answer a question like that. It's fascinating to think about, though, isn't it? Well, now, that is rather complicated. You can write to the committee directly, but I understand that there's quite the backlog. A month or more, according to friends of mine who just so happen to know about this sort of thing. Of course, if you could somehow contact Coalition Warship Archer, you could reach the committee directly, but, well, that obviously presents any number of logistical and technical challenges. A very astute question. You see, in addition to its role as a military warship, the Archer is also responsible for coordinating all coalition communications and surveillance operations in Rivershaw. Not just watching, it's listening as well. I don't know the particulars, of course, but I would expect a warship like the Archer to possess the most advanced surveillance equipment available outside of Seoul. Well, I suppose you could rent a private aerostatic and attempt to rendezvous with Archer directly, but I must caution against it. Warships like the Archer are usually authorized to fire on unidentified aerostatics on site. That might be the trickiest question of all. From a technical standpoint, it shouldn't be all that difficult. You simply require a radio transmitter capable of broadcasting on coalition frequencies. The problem is that those sorts of radio transmitters are tightly controlled by the coalition. Even the RCM doesn't typically have access to them outside of special joint operations. He's correct. It makes coordinating operations with the coalition exceedingly difficult from our perspective. All that said, someone with a powerful radio and a certain level of technical skill might be able to circuit bend their way onto the coalition frequencies. It's only too bad the old failed engineers are no longer available. This sort of thing would have been right in their wheelhouse. Hmm, she's not a failed engineer exactly, but perhaps that programmer from the church might be of assistance? In any event, it's a fascinating technical challenge. I'll be very interested to see how you tackle it. <laughs>